and spiritual leadership, they help us negotiate the principles that aren't specific commandments, thou shalt not, but it's principles. And they help us figure out how we would apply the principle if the Bible's not specific about that. That's why spiritual leadership's so important. And then the Holy Spirit, this gives us promptings of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will operate in your life when your spiritual leadership is not around you. Uh, when you're not sitting down reading the Bible, but you're in your life and the Spirit will prompt you, don't go there, don't do that, don't have this conversation, don't watch that, don't look at that, don't read that. Those are promptings. And so here's the, here's the point. All three of those holiness teachers must agree. If you think the Spirit is prompting you to do something that's against your spiritual leadership, you're wrong. Or your leadership is wrong. Something's out of balance. If your leadership teaches a principle that is outside the Word of God, they are now out of line. And so it's important that all three of our holiness teachers, they line up the Bible and our spiritual leadership and the Holy Spirit. And, and so that's very, very important to realize that we have not just one holiness teacher, we have three. And we need to be submitted to all of them. The Holy Spirit in you will never give you a, a, a prompting that contradicts the Word of God. The Holy Spirit in you will never prompt you to rebel against your spiritual leadership. It never will happen. So those three teachers work together. So that's where holiness teaching comes from. Question number two, this is a practical question. What are holiness standards anyway? And I, I don't really like the term, as I've said. I, I prefer lifestyle convictions. But let's talk about this word standards and where it comes from. In the Old Testament, a standard was a banner that was lifted up and displayed before the people. And that's where we take the word standard. Uh, Numbers chapter 21, the standard is the pole that the brazen serpent was placed on. And, and so uh, when God sets up a standard, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. That doesn't mean God will fight our battles, by the way. When you raised up the standard, it called all the troops to come. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God doesn't say, oh, you guys relax, I'll go fight. No, he says, I'll raise up the standard. You come over here and fight. That's what he does when the enemy comes in. The Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard and says, here's where we go fight. And we all gather to the standard. But the standard is, is basically God's presence and God's protection and, and God's leading of his people very specifically. That's what standard means. And, and so we've taken that and we've used that particular understanding with the modern definition of standard. And in the dictionary definition of standard, it's something that's established by authority or by custom as an example. If you go to uh, McDonald's around the world, it comes from the United States, but it's everywhere. It's in Canada, it's here, it's everywhere. Uh, there are certain standards for their food. Uh, if you go into McDonald's, you get that same taste uh, with all of the different products around the world. Uh, whether that's good or bad to you, I don't know, but, but you do. Because there's a certain standard. Uh, we have companies that have certain uniforms for their employees. That's a standard. We have hotels and businesses where there are standards for how the employees answer the phone. And if they don't answer the phone the proper way, they are dismissed from their job because that is a standard of performance. The standard is kind of like a test of, of quality. It's, it determines. Let's, let's use the example of a hotel. The way someone answers the phone at the hotel is a very minor thing, isn't it? The hotel is a huge building. It has many rooms. It has many different services for its guests and its employees. But the way someone answers the phone, that is important to the manager of that hotel. Why? Because it sets up the quality of the experience in the hotel. And so they will demand that the food be prepared a certain way and the phone be answered a certain way and they greet the guests uh, of the hotel a certain way because it sets up the atmosphere. It sets up the experience. In the same way, the way we live according to standards of holiness, that is not our experience in God. It is an evidence that the experience is good. It's the evidence outside that the experience is going to be wonderful. And, and so it is a standard is not the actual tangible part of holiness. That is internal. The tangible part of holiness is inside of me. But a standard is a sign outside that what's happening inside is from God. Now, we just looked at three kinds of holiness teachers. Let's look at three kinds of holiness standards. Some people in North America, they go, oh, 
I have enough problem with one kind of holiness standard. There are three? Yeah, there are three kinds of holiness standards. The first kind of holiness standard is Bible standards that come from the Bible. These are commands, and they need to be obeyed immediately and without question because they are Bible commands. And when God gives us a command, we obey it. And so a Bible standard, we just say, this is non-negotiable. You need to do this. That is a Bible standard. They are explicitly commanded in Scripture. But then there are what we call church standards. Because the church, I'm so thrilled that it is a body of believers that is around the world in many different locations and cultures. There are church standards. And there would be some things that spiritual leadership in one country or in one area of a country would feel very definite that they need to guide their congregation this way, that maybe someone in another culture or country or just even an area of the country, they might feel slightly differently. That's fine. That happened in the New Testament. There were different kinds of church standards depending on whether you were in Jerusalem or whatever. Uh, th there were different cultures. There was the Jewish culture. There was the Gentile culture. And then there were subcultures in the Gentile culture. And the early church, they wrestled with these issues and they decided there are a few things that are very, very important and very explicit. And so we do these. And the rest, we're going to allow the spiritual leadership in these areas to deal with their individual churches. And so church standards, these usually deal with the principles. And so we sometimes implement them a little more gradually in people's lives. And we teach them as they grow to be part of our church. And so uh, the first deals with commands. Just they're very explicit. The second is principles. We implement them a little more gradually and, and, and let people grow into them. And sometimes they deal with modern situations or with cultural situations. And so we trust our spiritual leadership because they are God called and God anointed. And then thirdly, there are personal standards. Personal standards come from your interaction with the Holy Spirit. And, and I want to stop just for a moment and talk about personal standards because they are very important, but they are not universal. Right. God will teach some of you a personal standard for your life based on your personality, based on your temptations, based on your past, and God will teach you, don't you go there. And I could walk there and it wouldn't affect me at all. But you might not be able to go there because maybe that is an area or a place or a group of people that you fell before, you messed up before, you were involved there. And so God's Holy Spirit in you will prompt you, don't do that, don't go there. And, and I don't sit back and look at you and say, oh, you are much weaker than I am because you can't do that. I respect you for following the prompting of the Spirit in your life. And I need to follow the prompting of the Spirit in my life because He may put a guard over me in a certain area that you would be fine. It would not be a temptation to you, but God knows me and God knows you. So these are personal convictions or personal standards. And here's the problem, because we can have fun with this one. Because sometimes people who have a strong personal standard, they feel that the pastor should teach their standard to the whole church. And it's just their personal standard. And uh, that doesn't work. In North America, uh, I, I don't know how it, it is dealt with here, but in North America we have all kinds of people with personal standards and they would like the pastor to take their personal standard and teach the whole church so that the whole church has to do what the Holy Spirit has prompted them to do. Now while I congratulate them and I respect them for allowing the Holy Spirit to, to teach them, I will not take their personal standard and make it a church standard or make it a Bible standard because it's not a Bible standard. It's something the Holy Spirit taught them. Uh, this is supposed to have also happened in Canada, and I hang my head in shame. But uh, there, there was a, a guy several years ago at one of our large meetings, and he, for some reason, felt that the Holy Spirit had prompted him. I, to be honest, I don't feel the Holy Spirit had anything to do with it, but I would leave it with him and God. Uh, but he felt the Holy Spirit had talked to him about perfume and deodorant and all kinds of, of personal toiletry products, and he didn't wear any of them. And he decided that not wearing deodorant would become a scriptural standard. And so he would go around to meetings and if he came up to another brother who had obviously a lot of cologne or deodorant on, he would go up to them and go, I see you wear deodorant. 
And he kept doing that, and he was trying to intimidate everybody as if that would be something God would require. I don't think there's anything in the Word of God or anywhere close that would require that. But this was something he thought was a standard from God. Well, if that's his standard, that's fine. But finally, one other brother had a very good answer. This guy came up to him, and he did the 